Hello, so I'm going to show you how to do these cute applique stitched letters. They're really, really simple to make. Um, this is the ones that I just finished doing. This is my finished product. And so let's get started. I'm going to clear out everything I have here so we can start on a clean slate. The font that I'm using just for this example, oops, I want to use all caps, is Candy Shop. I'm not sure if that is a free commercial license font. You would have to research that, but I'm just using this as an example because it's a nice, chunky, bubbly type font. Um, but I'm sure you can use this on whatever thick, chunky font you want. So when you have your text the next thing I do is I'm going to go up here to this magic wand and, well, actually, first of all, I am going to pull in my fabric piece that I'm using. I'm just going to bump this over just enough to cover the letters. And I'm going to put this layer under my text. That way I can position it the way that I want it to be. I think I'm going to do... Might need it to be a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll try that. Look, that's fine. Okay. So click back on your text layer. You're going to select outside of it. And then I zoom in a little bit. You're going to hold down your shift button. Now, if you have this type of chunky font that is outlined like this, I personally like to select the black. Um, centers the lines and the inside of that so that when you delete it from your fabric layer you have a nice big hole here and not a little bitty one because with the the dashes you would put around such a small area it would just either make the hole look completely covered or it would just look really smushed like so I'm gonna select that and now with this selected, I'm going to click back onto my layer and hit, I mean, my fabric layer. And on the keyboard, I'm going to hit delete. And then I'm going to do control D just to deselect that. Now we do not even need this text layer anymore, so I'm going to delete that. Now, see the holes here is what I was referring to. If I had left that black line, then it would just been a really small, small hole there. <clears throat> okay, so the next step is you want to click on your shape tool over here, and it doesn't matter if it's on any of these. I, by default, it was on rectangle, which is fine because you're not really using the shape part. Up here at the top, just make sure that when you click on your shape tool, that it says shape, fill, you know, all the way across. And here, you want, usually by default, it's on your straight line, but you want to you click on that and put it on this second dash line and the third one is a dotted line so you want the second dash line um, you want your fill to be off this I don't really mess with right now because after we get the stroke stitching on there you can adjust the coloring and the size so once we have it set to your dash line, you want to put this back on, or not back on, but you want to change it to path. And then once you have it set to path, you can hold down your control button on your keyboard. And you see how, right now I have control pushed, and you see the little hand cursor over here on top of this layer. It has like a little box, little outlined box on it. That's what you're looking for. And once that's there, you're going to Click this layer, and you see it selects everything in here. And I'm just going to click back up here on the selection tool, and then you're going to click select, modify, smooth, minus set to two, hit OK, select, modify, and then you're going to contract. Now this number that you choose here is going to depend on your font size your personal preference and where you want it to be positioned and the overall file size. I think this one is um, a 14 by 14 pixels, so 300 DPI. Um, 
So I have it set to 12. That looks fine for, you know, just for an example. Um, some people may want it to be a little bit more in. If that's the case, then you would just, you know, adjust that number. Once you have that, you're going to right click again, come down here to make work path, set tolerance to one, between one and two. I have it on one. Okay, you see the little, the little dashed, um, not dashed, but the, the outline box thing here. Once you have that, then you're going to click back on your shape tool and see it's on path. Now you're going to click on shape and click back over here. Yeah, okay. All right, so then the next thing you want to do is if you're happy with that, then, you know, then you can say you're done. But... If you wanted to change the colors, you're going to click back on your um, path tool here. And go to shape. And now from here, you can change your colors of your stitches. You know, whatever color you want, you can lower that. I think I like number 10. I like 10, but you could go as small as you wanted if you wanted tinier stitches I can zoom this out to show you um, whatever color you can adjust that now let me slide this over a little bit another thing you could do to add a little bit more of a realistic dimension to it first of all I'm gonna go here to my fabric layer here and I'm going to just turn the opacity down just a little bit so that the stitches can show up a little bit better. But this is optional. It, I mean if you like it that way that's fine. I'm just doing this as an example because we're going to go to rectangle this layer right here where your stitches are and I'm going to right click and go to blending options and put a drop shadow layer just a little bit. Let me zoom in because you can't really see it. It's such a subtle change. You can see it right there. If I hit preview, you can see it going away. It's just a little bit of a dimension there just to kind of make it pop. And you don't even have to use that if you're, if you're happy with it. And then if you wanted to, you could do it on the fabric layer as well. Again, it's a very subtle. You can really tell it along these edges here when I hit preview. Just a little bit of a dimension. If I zoom in, you can really see it. And then again, that would also depend on how you're using this file, if, you know, just what works for you. Um, but yeah, and then that, that is it. Um, so then you would, I guess you could flatten your image, you know, before you save it or whatnot. And that's it. And also, if, um, let me go back one step here. Um, if you wanted, after you, you know, after you make this, if you decide, yeah, I don't really like this fabric, um, you haven't lost anything. All you would need to do would be to select your fabric layer here. I'm gonna hit this control. I'm gonna click on this again, like that. And I'm just, I mean, I'm going to pull this back in without having to, you know, get another fabric layer. But let's say you decided you wanted a different part of the fabric. Actually, oh, let me back up again. You should not have it selected before you drag your fabric layer in here. Let's see. Let's just go right there. Okay. Now I'm going to hit control and then click on this, the text layer. You will need to go to select inverse, I believe it is, and then hit delete. There we go. And so I have this one hidden just so you could, you know, actually I can probably, I moved it, and you see that it cut it out just perfect, but and then I put it back on there so you have the difference, the different um, 
in your fabrics. Anywho, that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was easy to understand. And if you get stuck and need any help, just feel free to, um, to you know, message me and I will respond and help you out as, um, as I can. Thanks for watching.